What are you doing, huh? You always gotta be controlling everything all the time. Let me, let me book your room no, at a hotel for a no, couple of nights. Dad. I don't want it to go like this. David's memoir is called Beautiful Boy. This movie favors David's memoir. I think it's more powerful, the story seen through the lens of a father, to understand how devastating addiction can be in the first person, how devastating it can be when you're young, and how devastating it can be to family members that are ultimately helpless, even when, like David, you think your love and the ego of your love can save your son. Like, what am I doing wrong? How can I save him? When the lesson, devastatingly, is, um, you know, there's no, there's no formula to it. Um, there's no formula to why it happens, and there's no formula to, to fixing it. I thought we were close. I thought we were closer than most fathers Wait, and sons. Why? I felt better than I ever had, so I just kept on doing it. Once I met Nick, I was like, oh, wait a second. I don't have to play some conception of a drug addict. I have to play a human who happens to be addicted to drugs. I always keep a notebook for every movie I do, like for the, for the role I'm doing. And this one I had, look for the light in all caps, like at the top of every page. Where can the moments of brevity, of lightness, of familiarity, of a family structure, when, when can those come into focus? Because then weirdly it becomes even more of a horror movie. I think the goal of this movie, in many ways, is to present addiction facelessly. Black hole in me. I still have a family. I want them to be proud of me. You get a sense of shame. Like, there is such shame around use, around addiction. And part of that, I think, is stereotype, and part of it is being in the throes of it. I think you're just like, how... Imagine how defeating it would be to think, with all your body, I don't want to be doing this anymore. You're going to find it again. You're gonna get it back. I think like in life, in any job, whatever, if you're doing it well, you have like that part of your brain that's like, good job. But here it was so counterintuitive because to be in pain and to feel horrible was the good job. One had to get there. But I remember when we finished, I remember walking home and thinking, oh, that was super hard. This is so sensitive, this kind of material. I tried to imagine what a travesty would be if someone played you and you hated it. Steve Carell has a really good way of talking about this. You don't want the guy you're playing to feel like you're studying how they're eating soup, is how he puts it. And I like that because they're not your science experiment. And unless you're playing Cheney or something, and people know him at large, the responsibility isn't to be general, but is to be truthful.